Well, I thought I would continue with the white poppy and talk about that a little bit more because I feel like I rushed through it just to get the um, video up for everybody today. So let's let's regroup and talk about the white poppy in shadow, okay? Because as I was painting, I was painting my original one that I showed you today and it was getting darker and darker and darker and that's typically the way I paint. Um, I, I get a little heavy handed and then I there's a way that I compensate for that and I'm going to go into that in just a little bit. But just to regroup, um, basically, okay, so the first pass is the, you know, combination of gray blues that you mix. Then you add, add your yellows in here, and then we're going to uh, discuss, you know, how to get this even darker. And here's the photo that we're talking about, okay? So that right there is a lot darker than... <laughs> The shadow here but uh, you know like I said I, I'm just heavy-handed now I was I wanted to set this up so you could see everything that um, actually goes on so I have my palettes ready to go and we will discuss how to um, glaze in our shadow right here so we're gonna look at this photo you know what I might do? I think I'm just going to take this and put this over here for right now so we can compare the two and it makes it easier for me to see. So right here in my blue palette, you can see I have um, phthalo blue and I'm going to um, add a lot of water. And doing this, it keeps me from getting too heavy, see, too heavy handed, but that's just the way I paint. Um, but I'm going to add a lot more water right here. And um, so we find a nice happy medium that everyone can work with. Okay. Um, let's see. So, oh good. You can see the palette. So here it is right here. And, um, and then I have my yellow, transparent yellow ready to go. And I have another one stroke brush that I'm going to play with and also the round. Okay. So let's go back and I'm going to actually look to see to get this glow on this one fold that is um, on the white poppy. And I'm going to take my phthalo blue and begin to glaze it in. Now also what I like to do is bring in a little bit of the permanent rose and then you add that. And so you're going to get this really nice violet. Okay, and if you notice in my pan, I like to have a little bit of variation within these two colors, um, and I don't mix a whole lot. I let them just mingle in the palette all by themselves. This is where I can grab and then and then lay my um, my glaze down, and this gives me the ability to have a nice variety. If you keep mixing, 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 you're going to end up with um, one color, and it'll probably be, you know, more of a gray-looking color. So here I go. I'm going to just knock this in right up next to that one fold that we want to keep, um, you know, a little bit lighter, and here it comes. Now, again, I'm going to post a whole series of, you know, a lot of uh, inside tips on, well, they're not inside tips, but a lot more information than what you're getting from the DVD. The DVD has been edited, um, you know, for television, and I feel like I could give you a little bit more than what the DVD um, has to offer. And there it goes. So I'm adding it in. I'm going to clean my brush, and I'm going to come over here. And put some water down right here and then soften the edge, soften it, soften it. Okay, now I'm not going all over the whole thing just yet. Okay, and I'm going to, um, again, detail some of this out. And the lovely folds still show through in the shadow. 
and um, so I'm going to play with those a little bit more. Do you see that? That's nice and wet. You can drop some pigment in and uh, round and around. Okay, so yeah, so I think there's so much more that I can show you than what um, I showed you earlier in the earlier uh, video, and I want to be able to share that with you. So you get everything that I have to offer. Okay, so a little bit more purple. And I'm going to take my time with some of this because I know I'm always rushing through for videos and um, television and all of that or getting ready for a workshop and everything stepped out. Um, but I feel like this time around I'm going to go, I'm going to work this a little bit slower so you could see a little bit more uh, demonstration. Okay. Here it comes on around. Okay, now depending upon your personality, your style, how you want your painting to look, you can go light handed, you can go heavy handed. You don't have to be as heavy handed as myself, or if you, if you do like that, you know, the darks popping and, um, and not so many glazes, you know, you can follow along with this. Um, don't be afraid because I'm going to show you, even if you get it too dark, how to correct that. Okay, And you really never can tell until the whole background's in, you know, all of these darks right here. Um, right here, I'm going to go ahead and lay that in. And then you're going to let this dry. Okay, we're going to let it dry. And then we can come back to it and put another glaze over it. Okay. The nice thing is, is that you can leave this as is and then make some decisions later on when you get closer to um, the finished uh, portion of the painting. And this is, this is something that is more like detail work and we can go into that later on this week. And I'll probably be showing a lot of you um, when I do the critiques, you know, how to detail certain areas out that um, you know that you might want to pay attention to later on okay but if you're if you love the detail work and you like painting you know um, a little bit slower take your time understand the process not even you know it's just having fun with it because because I sat down and started painting this evening trying to um, catch up with all of you and be able to get my painting ready for demonstration. And I thought, you know, I'm having so much fun with this that I think it's okay for me to um, do yet another how-to video and post it. You may not even be needing this information at this point of the painting, but it's nice to have. Okay. So right here, you know, we have uh, some of the deeper orange right here. And while it's wet, I'm just dropping some orange in at the top. And um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a variety. And I'm just going to let that be, you know, fuzz out and bleed into the blue. Um, the nice thing is, is that um, slowing it down gives you a little bit more time to play with the, this center area, which I think is, it's, uh, de uh, you know, it's really detailed, takes, you know, some, some time to complete. But if you do a little at a time and you keep going back and forth, you let it dry, then you go back and you start to incorporate the yellow and, um, and then you incorporate some of the negative shapes around the stems or the stamens. You know, you can really uh, come up with a really wonderful center. Okay, here is transparent yellow. Just kind of adding a little bit of water to this. I'm not going to go too dark too soon. Drop that in. Do you see? So you can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, this is still, you know, it's just all blending together, so there's no, um, while it's wet, it's kind of hard to get the detail in, but you can actually get a head start by adding 
the yellow right there and then we'll, we once it's dry we can go back in and detail it out a little bit more okay okay so that you're going to go round and round and round and round and now right the bud part right here in the middle you can add a little bit more um, pigment right there and then you can actually um, move I'm going to move some more yellow through here up to that center and it doesn't have to be exact move those a little bit more and I'm going to add a little bit more yellow up here and then drop some more orange in and right now okay pulling from another palette that has a little bit of the permanent rose in it. And I didn't want to put permanent rose in here because I know as soon as I hit my, my, um, you know, my spot of pigment right there, it's going to all blend in. And I want this mostly to be clean, transparent yellow so it doesn't uh, get too um, contaminated with the pink, I guess I, I want to say or with the permanent rose. Look, so you can bring this down, bring this down, and try and just kind of give it the in indication that it's moving towards the center. Okay. Hoping that you can see that. Okay, so I'm going to add this in, add this in. more a little bit more do you see how that negative shape I'm starting to define that a little bit more in the center bring this out out down keep adding okay and now I'm going to go to another palette that I have over here and um I'm going to find this deep dark color that's over there. Um, it's almost a black. So I'm going to use Permanent Alizarin Crimson and Windsor Green Blue Shade right here. You see that? And see how nice and dark that is? And um, that, that can come right in here. Tap, tap, tap. A little bit of this and a little bit right there. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you're comfortable with a flat, you can use a flat brush. If you're comfortable with your round, you can use your round brush. Um, it's, uh, you know, there's no one particular way of going in. Um, let's see. So I've got, I'm kind of looking at this, what's going on here. So there is a dark, darker ring around here. Okay. And there... It's funny how this one has a certain look, this one has a certain look, that has a certain look. So the centers are all a little bit different. And, um, and every time I paint this, it does come out a little bit different. So, um, but it is, it's, I, I do enjoy this one subject and I have been having fun with that. So I think this looks pretty cool. I like that. And I'm going to let that dry. Okay, I'm going to let all of this dry right here. Um, we can come back up here and talk about. Um, let's see. We don't. We can't see that just yet. I'm going to turn this up. So, what I have here are, you know, two paintings, two two various steps, um, and this particular demo is from the actual DVD that you're seeing um, online and it's been worked and worked and worked some more you know get me discussing and demonstrating um, kind of like the way this is looking right in here I'm enjoying this center very much so but it just takes a little while to get it to this point okay um, when you look at the reference photo, it's nowhere near as detailed as I'm, I'm getting it right here. So I have another painting here that I want to refer back to so we can actually get back to 
looking at the reference photo, maybe not getting it so exaggerated so that you can use the, re uh, the reference photo as a, um, a very much as your guide. Now, the reason why I'm showing this, and I'm going to show you the, the other piece, is because I want you to be able to have choices, okay? I want you to be able to have choices when you're painting, and you know, you, maybe you want to just keep it not as, not as active in the petals, oops, as it is here. Maybe you want it to be more like this, okay? Maybe you want it not, you know, because it all depends on your personality. It depends on how you paint. It depends on, it just depends on you as an artist. So, and that's the beauty of this. Even though we're all doing the same exact, you know, working from the same reference photo and you're working from the same um, line drawing and, you know, we're, we're doing a how-to, um, this actually is um, is where a variety of um, paintings emerge at the end of a workshop because we all have a different spin and a different take on how we want it to look. Um, okay, so let's, let me push this. Oh, I guess that's okay, because we're right here, right here in this, in this area. Now, as you can see, I got it pretty dark. Um, I'm actually going to bring it up a little bit higher. I'm thinking the light might um, show, because I'm looking on the, cam on the monitor, and the camera is picking up on, you know, it's not showing the true, it's showing it much darker than it really is, okay? Um, but do you see what happened? So it, it got pretty heavy-handed in here. Uh, and, I, and that's just the way I like to paint. And that's the way I, I approach a lot of my subjects. And that's how I got to, you know, the idea of, well, you know, light dark to light because I am, you know, I'm all about mixing my darks and just laying them down. It's, I don't know, it's just something that I really like to do. Um, it's, maybe it's just the way I see things or I don't, I'm not quite sure. Okay, so do you see what's happening here? I'm even going darker right here and I'm putting um, just thalo blue right over some of this. And so that's going to make the rest of this look nice and light, right? Okay. And so as I'm working around, I'm actually giving um, the stamens a little bit more of a, um, a roundness, which actually makes that pop. That's going to make that pop a little bit more because I, I did put blue over, over the whole center. And if you want to bring some of that out, back out, it's not that you have to lift. And that's really a lot of my students think that they have to go back in and lift because they think they've gotten it too dark. When actually the best thing you, you can do is go ahead and lay down more darks in, um, in key areas. And then, and then all of a sudden those darks don't seem so dark anymore. And, and, the, and the thought of lifting you know, it just isn't uh, something that you th you'll you feel that you'll need to do, okay? So I'm just going to paint a little bit, and I'm going to drop this in and drop this in here. Now, these videos that I'm doing, I I'm trying to keep them somewhat short so I can post them a little quicker than having them, um, you know, upload. So that's why you're going to be getting these in part one, two, and three and four and so on and so forth. Okay, so just wanted to come back and revisit this this poppy right here. I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing. Okay, so if you just happen to get it too dark and you're thinking about lifting some of your pigments, you know, think get you can always lift at the very end of a painting. You don't have to lift right away. This gives you an opportunity to, to see all the elements, the background, everything uh, next to each other, and you'll be able to judge your values um, throughout your whole painting a little bit more once your painting's finished. And then at the very end, 
you can stand back and that's when you decide whether you want to lift or not lift. To lift or not to lift? That is the question. But generally it's it's not an issue once everything's in place. I'll, I can tell you for for years, you know, I've had so many students go, I think I have to lift. I think I have, you know, I've got to lift the pigment. And I always try and, and persuade the students not to do that because it's, um, it's a cleaner look when you add some darks and you, you compensate with the values more so than uh, the lifting of the pigment. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry a little bit and I'll come back and revisit this in a few minutes. Um, or let's see, I think what I'm going to do now is actually pause this, post it, and then I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about the, this area in here. And I want to revisit this again. Okay, so here we go. Just going to 